Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. All right, I want to give this word very quickly before I lose it. Um, so I'm going to pray after I do it. But um, I hear Abba saying something just so beautiful um, this morning. Just so beautiful. All I was doing was um, making a little breakfast and I heard him say something like to present as a pure virgin to Christ. And I said, yes, Father. And he said, some fell asleep, didn't they? So this word is going to be probably short, however, Abba Jesus does it. But this word is going to be beautiful because I could just feel it in my spirit already. So I heard Abba saying to present as a pure virgin to Christ. And the Bible tells us that by the washing of the words of the word, it's exactly how it's getting done. And you know, that's, the, that's the refining process. When we trust God, we can trust that his word, Yahweh, Jesus' word, is complete. It's true. It's perfect. It's refined. It's able for reproof and correction to lead us all to righteousness. When I heard Father say, um, to present as a pure virgin to Christ, beloved, he said some fell asleep, didn't he? And I was like, is he talking about those who died? And he said, yes. He said some fell asleep, didn't he? Some of the purest hearts, some of the most beautiful people that, ne that loved Jesus Christ and never had Oh, not never had a fault, but never had dealings with the world or evil and, and all of that. Some of the most beautiful people that we know have fallen asleep, haven't they? And whilst I was talking to Abba, I heard him say, they have fallen asleep. Have you stopped to consider that they were some of my pure virgins? Have you stopped to consider that they were exactly as I wanted them to be? And I said, Father, and he said to me, he said, I refined them. They chose me. Their ways were simple. Their ways were pure. Their heart and their spirit, their soul was pure. So... I begin to understand that he was speaking about those who died, just like the apostles died. Just like, like, why am I even smiling right now? Because the Comforter is coming. Because many, 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 many are falling asleep. But Lord Jesus says to those who fell asleep and those who didn't fall asleep until his glory is coming, right? Now, Immediately as he was speaking this, I got into my spirit, my grandparents. They were some of the purest people that I know. They weren't perfect, but in a way they were. They were really pure of heart. Never in the world had a beautiful spirit, beautiful heart. They loved on people. It was, it was so clear. So we're going to, I hear him saying, go to Isaiah. So we're going to go somewhere in Isaiah. Where are we going to go, Papa? Where's Isaiah? Isaiah? I wasn't even thinking of them. Then I thought of them. Then I was like, Oh, I'm so glad that they're not here in this world that's getting crazy. After he said that. 
We're going into Isaiah 57. We're going into Isaiah 57. And we're going to read the before and the after. All right. So the pure for, you know, when Obji said, blessed are those who are pure in spirit for they shall see God, right? The pure of heart are those that are belonging to Christ. They have crucified their desires of this world. It's kind of like when Grandpa passed away and he lived on an estate overseeing it for like over 60 years. He had rights to that estate. He could have claimed ownership and could have just easily gotten a portion. And he just left it all behind. Why? Because his peace was worth more. And we're talking about no small estate. We're talking about a 75-acre estate. Yeah? So he was saying those who have crucified their flesh, those who have left behind the world, those who have chosen God in their steps, they mightn't have been perfect. But the righteous man will fall down seven times and he'll get up seven times, beloved. My granddad, my step-granddad, was like the perfect granddad. He was so, he was really, he was just, he, I loved him so much. <laughs> he was a perfect example. And he had such a purity of heart. To everything that he did. To everyone that he meant. He had his ways. He smoked a little. He smoked a lot. Because he was by the beach. And maybe that was his only vibe. Whatever. But he had the purest of heart. When it came to things and people. When it came to life. And I hear Abba Jesus saying. As much as that Holy Spirit, as Him, is refining people's hearts, preparing them and us for His glorious appearing, He has also prepared those who have fallen asleep. Those who have fallen asleep, those who have died, beloved. Those who have died choosing Christ, they suffered. For what? For choosing Christ. For never being a part of this crazy world. Never, never choosing this world and its systems above God. Like never. So I heard of a saying. Now, now he's showing me something like the flood. And he's showing me those who, those who were suddenly taken. What, what were they doing? What were they doing? They were eating, drinking, rejoicing, giving in marriage, marrying, and doing whatever. They didn't care who they married, what they married. They didn't care if it was a demon in human skin. They didn't care. They were just having their own way, doing whatever they felt like. And then the flood came and swept them all away, right? Now, for those who lost loved ones, you had a favorite grandmother, you had a favorite granddad, pure heart, just beautiful people. Maybe you had a wife who died. Maybe you had a husband who died. Maybe you had an aunt or an uncle, whoever, whoever you had that passed away, that you know, without a doubt, chose Jesus and was pure of heart. Why my battery just go down so quickly? Okay. They had a pure of heart. And they fell asleep, beloved. Just like the ten virgins can represent the world. Because salvation is first unto the Jews and then the Gentiles. It goes to the entire world. Some were wise and some were foolish. 
half feared God and half didn't. So, you know, because it represents a whole people, we can say that as even the world. And there were some that loved God and there were some that didn't. They all fell asleep. And when they woke up, what they had stored up Stop treasures that will last. Stop treasures that moths can't eat and rust can't destroy and thieves can't steal. Store up treasures that will last. As Rehe was saying, those who were wise, those who loved God, they stored up what would last. They chose the goodly things, just like Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus chose the goodly things, and he suffered on the earth. And he died, and the rich man also died. But then Lazarus was the only one whose treasure lasted. Lazarus was the only one who received the reward of heaven. So, that's what I hear of the saying. The pure virgins, some of them fell asleep. Some of them are sleeping, and this is why. Let's read Isaiah 56, take it up in verse 12. Come. One says, and I will bring wine, and we will fill we'll fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. Tomorrow will be as today, and much more abundant. And look at verse eleven. Yes, they are greedy dogs which never have enough. And they are shepherds who cannot understand. They're blind, leading the blind. Hmm? They don't know what they're doing. But they want to be on titles and stature. But they don't have a clue. They all look to their own way. See that? Everyone for his own gain and his own territory. Look at verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant, dumb, loving to slumber. All right. <laughs> so hold on there. Hold on there. Because he's calling the beast of the field to devour the wicked. And then it comes down. So we're going to read before now. Okay. Isaiah 56 and verse 12. Come. One says, now we'll bring wine, and we will fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. Tomorrow will be as today, and much more abundant. What are they living for? Self, greed. Look at Isaiah 57, verse 1. The righteous perishes, and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away. What does that mean, taken away? They died. Whilst no one consider, considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. Come on, somebody. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. I'm going to read that again. The righteous perishes, meaning they die physically. And no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. So whilst we are here, whilst we are 
in this world awaiting everything that it's coming everything that you know we have to face those who were most were merciful those who were pure of heart those who chose god those who we can rejoice that they don't have to face this we can rejoice because Many, 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 and most or the majority of the times, we know that our grandparents, our great grandparents, whoever, pure hearted people, beautiful people, with real morals, with real hearts, with real love, we know without a doubt that they were good and that they suffered because they were good. You can almost put it together and see how simple their lives were to how beautiful their hearts were. You could almost put it together and see how they chose the beautiful things, the things that were worth, seriously worth something, over the things that are perishing, which is this world. So I was saying, take heart and take courage. Be encouraged. Be comforted. If your loved ones die and you see them as pure hearted in Christ, you see them making the beautiful choices, or you saw them making the beautiful so, choices, because they, I'm seeing, speaking, since they have died, that you see, you've seen them making those beautiful choices towards Jesus. Rejoice that they're resting, that they've been taken from evil. They've been taken away from evil, so evil can't hurt them because they're too pure for the world. They're too pure for this world. So God has taken them away from evil. He's given them rest. Whilst they might not have known all that we know with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they knew quite a lot. And they are grateful for being taken away from evil. I can tell you my parents, my mom's mom and my mom's stepdad were the best. They were the best. And they were, they were suffering on this earth, like not suffering with like disease and sickness and all that, no. But they were loved, but they were living at the bare minimum. They were, they struggled with people doing them wickedly and that kind of thing. But they were always too kind-hearted, very beautiful, beautiful people. And the only time that they had any kind of suffering to really say that they suffered, suffered, was when they were about to die, which was with cancer. So that, but... For the rest of it, where their lives were just, they had little, but they made it a lot. They weren't even together, but they were always together. They were married and not divorced, but kind of separated and they couldn't do without each other. Grandpa lived in one, he left to one day yesterday, then she left, no, Grandma left first and then Grandpa was there and they couldn't stop like, seeing each other they couldn't stop like every weekend she's by him uh, baking stuff and taking to him making sure he has this make it was a beautiful 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 thing to see that even in that state of being separated they couldn't even stay angry at each other they loved each other so um i was saying and i tell you it just came out of nowhere where if you have loved ones who passed away and you know that they... All right. So if you have loved ones who passed away and they beautiful hearts and they chose Christ, they chose the goodly things in life, not this world, you could rest or show that they didn't, even if like how my granddad and grandmom, like they, you know, died eventually with cancer, just a few months prior to them passing away, not like years of suffering or anything. 
but you can be rest assured that they were taken away from evil, that God was merciful unto them to take them away from those who were harming them. In this world, you will have tribulation. I take heart of overcome the world. Now, Obadiah says, my prayer is that not that you be taken away from this world, but you be kept from the evil one. Which means if you have chosen that side of life to, to be a good person, to be a person about the godly things, the pure things, the things of God, then Abba Jesus is saying, he will empower us to keep the evil one away from us. But you will have tribulation. You choose him regardless. And they did it effort, effort, effortlessly. They did it effortlessly. They faced their demons. They faced the, those who wanted to attack them effortlessly. They almost made it in such a way that they did not, they weren't even affected. They were, they had their ups and their downs, but like everybody, but they chose it effortlessly. And at the end, he was merciful to them. So take heart. If your loved ones have fallen asleep, they are resting in Christ, grateful for that rest. The dead know nothing. So they won't come back to you and say, hey, oh, I'm resting. Oh, but, but, no. They, the dead know nothing. Their thoughts perish. Their words perish. Their deeds perish. Everything perishes when you die. So you just wait until the resurrection. All right? So take heart with this word. I hope this helped you because it sure just, it just wrapped his loving arms around me and just comforted me. I don't know why because I wasn't even thinking of it. But anyway, I hope this encouraged someone who lost a loved one who knew that they were good people in Christ and they died, be encouraged. They're resting in the Lord. All right? So shalom, shalom. Shalom. I got a, I had more to do, but uh, it's now at 6, 5%. So I got to go charge. Shalom. Yes, Jesus is your Savior, and yes, he is Lord God. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that he is, and receive him. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. This thing is like, yeah, 6%. I gotta go. Shalom.